back to the 2002 Toyota 4Runner. Hey, we got a replacement four-wheel drive module from eBay. Let's plug it in, see if it works. All right, eBay module plugged in. Place your bets now. Is it gonna blink and still fuss? Put a neutral. Uh oh. Were we wrong in our diagnosis? What the heck? Well, that sucks. I guess I just ate a hundred bucks. Not the end of the world. But what's wrong with this module? Let's get back to the meter, back to the wiring diagram. Check up some. Check out those signals going to the uh, front axle. That would have been too easy, huh? All right. So from the initial diagnosis. I was worried about the L1 and L2 um, wires, indicator wires going to this ADD actuator. So in free mode, one of them is supposed to be grounded. In locked mode, the other one's supposed to be grounded. So L1, I don't remember which one's which. We'll have to look at that 2006 Tacoma diagram. But let's see. On L1, this light green wire what the voltage is when we turn the key on. Five volts, 4.6, and then it goes to zero. Okay, that's different than, than the original module. Let's plug in the original module and see what the difference is. Okay, this is the original module. Let's do the same check. The key on. Same exact thing. No kidding. Really? Let's go to the L2 wire. Alright, here we go. So I'm wondering, when this module goes into fail-safe mode or limp mode, does it shut off those sense signals and just say, hey, we're, we're not doing anything? That's what it looks like. How do we miss that the first time? I, didn't, don't, I don't remember seeing the 5 volt on there. Maybe we just had the key on and it wasn't putting out the 5 or 12 volts on there, the sense voltage. Because now both modules are acting exactly the same. And only for the first few seconds do you get the 5 volt on the wire that's not grounded going to the ADD. So the only other thing it could be is it's not happy with the position of the actual transfer case. Not the individual switches, but the transfer case motor. Because there's three switches in here in the transfer case motor. We check these. But we have no service info on, on these. We could look at the Tacoma diagram, see if there's a problem with one of these switches. We'll go from there. All right, well, let's keep going with this diagnosis. So from the 2006 Tacoma, we have this internal diagram of the transfer case shift motor. And TL1, TL2, and TL3 are the three wires that are grounded depending on which position the transfer case motor is in. So in H2, TL1 is grounded. In H4, only TL2 is grounded. And then in L4, so on the Tacoma, the low range 4 is here. But in this case, um, it's going to be 4 high diff lock. And then this is the lever itself goes into low range. So we're just worried about the three positions, 2 high, 
four high and four high diff lock. But I think the layout is exactly the same. So let's take a test light from battery power right at the module and see if any of these wires are grounded. TL1, TL2, or TL3. Okay, so all we need is a test light from battery positive. If it finds a ground, it's going to light up. So first let's check TL1. It is a blue and yellow wire, pin 9. This one, not lit. TL2, pin 22, blue and white. Okay, that is lit up. And then TL3 is the blue and black. That's going to be pin 8 over here. Not lit up. So that right now, this transfer case motor should be in um, two-wheel drive, or four high, not diff lock. Is that really the case? Um, can we check that? Well, if it was in lock mode, so with the transmission in neutral, if only one wheel is off the ground, you should not be able to spin it, correct? If it's in diff lock mode, because one of the axles is planted on the ground, none of those wheels can spin. If we're in four high without the diff lock, you should be able to spin the wheel. So let's try that. Let's put it in neutral, lift up one wheel, and see if we can spin it. Okay, so in park, this wheel is definitely locked in. Now let's put it in neutral. If the differential is not locked, the center differential, this wheel should be able to spin. You would think. Huh. Well, next thing I want to try to do is actually force the transfer case motor right from the module. We'll put power and ground to it just for a split second and move it one way or the other. And we can monitor the 2H um, line with a test light to see if it goes in the two-wheel drive. All right, here we go. So this motor, according to service info, if we send voltage down TM1 and give it a return path on TM2, that should go towards the two-wheel drive. So we want to ground TM2, this blue wire right here, so I have that grounded to our known good ground here. And then, through a four amp uh, test light pair, actually let me put in the other bulb, we'll have four amps on this wire, on this needle probe, so it's a safe way to do it. We're not putting power directly to the motor, we're just putting four amps. So you can see um, that should work. So let me put in the extra bulb and we'll try to drive this motor. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna drive the motor. If it reaches 2H, this little bulb should light up. Let's try it. That's it, are we in too high? So the ADD is still locked in. Um, interesting. But the if we're in too high, we can go a little bit further because we could be in the middle between 4H and 2H. That's it, that's the limit. If we go the other way, if we go this way, that should be too high. So axle's still locked in, but I assume the motor should have switched the transfer case to too high. So the front drive shaft should spin independently. We should be able to turn this wheel. Even with the differential locked in the front. Hmm. 
Okay. Let's uh, let's plug in the module and see if anything changed with the motor in this 2H position. All right, let's turn the key on to see if anything changed. Listen for sounds. It just did something. Now it's blinking again. Are we in four-wheel drive now? It went back into four-wheel drive, didn't it? Let's put this test light on here. Let's move it back again. Let's move it back again, manually. So we'll monitor the 2H sense wire. We'll ground out the blue. Send power to the green. Okay, there we go. We're in 2H, supposedly. And let's keep the test light on there. Plug this sucker in. Turn the key on. Why? Why did it do that? I tried doing something. Click, click. What if we uh, put this thing in neutral? Would that help at all? What if we put this thing in neutral? Let's, uh, let's try that again. Okay, something's really weird. So I shifted it into too high. Our indicator is on, on the TL1. And then I pushed the four-wheel drive button Plugged in the module, turn the key on, and now we have a solid green thing saying we're in four-wheel drive. How does that make any sense whatsoever? What if we push the diff lock button? So it went to diff lock. Uh oh, now it started blinking, and now we're dead in the water. So it tried. It tried to do something. So once it got out of too high, something really weird happened. Okay, so detection switch H4L, that's high, four high locked differential. Right now, after it stopped and freaked out, look, it thinks we're in four high locked. However, that should also mean that TL3 is grounded and TL3 is not grounded. Let me show you that right here. It's definitely not. But TL2 is. That's pin 22. Okay, so that's a disagreement, I think, because we don't have this OEM service info for which switch is which. But I, I'm just assuming it's the same as the 2006 Tacoma. So, I, that's suspicious. So this switch here, H4L, is on or grounded, while TL2 instead of TL3 is grounded. So this is TL3, TL2 is right here, TL2. And then this must be TL1, TL1. So right now TL2 is closed in 4HL. I think it'd be 4H. What about this one right here, this red and black, does that ever turn on? Let me move the transfer case around and see if that turns on. Alright, so this red and black wire, pin 6, 
is never grounded. I moved the transfer case all the way forward, all the way back with the test light in pin 6. It never turned on. That's a problem. Now, we can go to the transfer case and find this detection switch transfer four-wheel drive position. This should be four high. This one here. So this one works. And then two-wheel drive TL1 works. Let me uh, double check TL2 and TL3 and then we'll uh, go into the truck. Well I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm messing with the transfer case shift motor so I got it kind of back a little bit from the transfer case but you can't just take it off. The whole shaft goes into the transfer case and moves shift forks. So um, I'm trying to remove this now. You can see the rust is so bad it's cracked the plastic right in half there. This bolt I just snapped off. That's nice. It's complete. I mean, it's done. It's like completely corroded in there. I'm sure all three of these are going to be the same. Um, but I don't have any other ideas here. I want to remove this plastic piece and manually try to move that shaft in and out and see if we can get this thing in the two-wheel drive at least. Because right now, It's in four-wheel drive. I mean, we could move the um, ADD actuator manually, but I just want to disconnect this drive shaft from the rear drive shaft, put it into two high. Um, oh, I guess we have to try to extract those and try to get this motor off. What a mess. So using the pry bar and chisel method, I got the electrical piece, this is the motor, little worm gear, those are the three um, traces. So you can see there's one, two, three traces right there. Those are the sense wires. And here is the, uh, the mechanical part. Okay, so what do we do now? We'll try to turn this, see if you know, that's the maximum there. Okay, so something clicked. And that's it, that's the limit. So it's kind of spring-loaded. So now let's spin the tire. Okay, we're in finally in two-wheel drive. Unbelievable. Let's try to go back into um, four. So I'm going to spin the wheel while we... There we go. That's four. And then that's four locked, apparently. Okay. So this is four unlocked. Let me put the transmission in neutral and see if the locked in the regular position works as intended. Alright, here we go. So transmission's in neutral. Okay, that's, that's definitely two-wheel drive. That's four high. Oh, and that's differential unlocked, so I think that's locked in. That's too high again. That's locked in. Okay, so one of those is free. So the middle is actually diff lock on. So let's see, this position all the way counterclockwise all the way counterclockwise we put in park let lock in so now we're in park all the way counterclockwise 
Okay. We're locked in. So all the way counterclockwise is four high free. Then clockwise one click. Right there is four high locked. And this way all the way, two wheel drive. Okay, so mechanically the transfer case works perfectly fine. We learned that. It seems to be, you know, pretty happy to spin. Two wheel drive. Okay, let's put in two wheel drive. Put this thing back on. And then connect these switches back up so he knows where it is. So these are the position switches because the shift fork, <clears throat> the rod goes through here with little detents. So that makes sense. Let's see if it's happy in two wheel drive. All right, so I put the transfer case motor back together in its original position, lubed up that seal so it seats all the way in. Module's plugged in. Let's see what happens. Two-wheel drive, is it happy? Did it unlock the front differential? Let's see. Yep, front diff is unlocked, okay. Let's uh, put in the four high, so we'll just push the button. It's blinking again. So it's happy in two-wheel drive, went to four high, and it's blinking. Okay, so it went back to two, that's good. Uh, I might need to roll to successfully get into four-wheel drive high. Um, let's put it into four low. Let's just pop it in the neutral. Let's see if we spin the wheel. There we go. So that's four low. What if we press the diff lock? Boom. Diff lock is in. It's definitely locked in. So it didn't like that. So now it's stuck in four high diff lock mode. Oh, cripes. Well, it almost worked. Seems like it went in, but didn't come back up. So we can manually reset it again, put it in the two high, and just exercise it between two high and four high without the diff lock. Actually, I'm curious if we can drive the motor back from here manually. So let's go into two-wheel drive. Okay, front. Yes, we are in two-wheel drive. So that was successful. Now let's plug in the module. Turn the key on. Make sure we're in two-wheel drive here. Dang, still didn't like that. Now we're back into four locked. That's ridiculous. All right, so I manually reset it again into two wheel drive. Plug in the module, axle's free, everything's free. <clears throat> so in this state, it is happy. Let's just push the four wheel drive button, see what happens. Okay, so it went through four high diff lock into four high free. Okay, 
So in neutral, as the drive shaft is spinning, if we put it in park, yep, we're good. So we're in definitely in four high free. It's happy in this state. So what about coming back in the two wheel drive? Let's put it back in the neutral. Release the four wheel drive button. Will it go through four high lock into two wheel drive? No. It's fussing. And now we'll not go back into two wheel drive. So on the four high, four high free, coming back into two high, it's stuck in four high diff lock, right in the middle. Why is that? All right, so I'm gonna make a chart of which of these sense pins are grounded in which position. We need to make a list and see if something doesn't make sense. So in too high, I manually reset it, turn the key on, it's definitely in too high, we don't see the pictogram. And actually TL3 is grounded, which is pin eight, black, or uh, blue and black wire, and pin eight, that would be um, we're well, going to use our test light to test it. This one right here. See that? And that's the only one out of all these switches. So I'm going to do the same for four high low and four high free. All right, let's switch into four wheel drive. It went right in. We have the green indicator on. So front axle is locked in. The drive shaft is spinning, but the differential is unlocked. So in this mode, let's see what all the switches, um, what positions the switches are in. Okay, so in four high, when the car is happy, here are the results. So TL1 is grounded. TL2 and TL3 are at 10.7 volts. Then these two switches here, they didn't change. Well, actually, the four-wheel drive switch, red and black, it was 11.7 before, now it's 10.9. That's suspicious. You would think this would be grounded right now when you're in four-wheel drive, right? So that might be an issue. So that this is the first thing that um, is suspicious. Now can we try turning on the diff lock and see if it engages. Okay, so it's locked, but it's not happy. Let's record all the numbers in this state. Okay, so here are the results in four high locked mode. This is when the actuator's in the middle. And it's blinking now, so it's not happy. So I think this is a problem. This foil drive switch red and black went from 11.7 to 10.9, it should go to zero and light up our test light from battery positive. So let's see where this switch lives and we can even unplug it, ground that, and see if this thing stops blinking. Okay, so here are the two switches. The yellow one is for the differential lock position, 4HL, and the red one is just for four-wheel drive regular free. There's the red and black wire. That's pin six. So I'm, I'm gonna ground it out through a fuse. That's what the switch is supposed to do. Now let's see what happens up here. This should have grounded the red and black wire, pin six. Let's see if that indeed is grounded now. And pin six with our test light. Yes, it is grounded. Let's see if the car is happy. Okay, it's in diff lock mode, not blinking. Foil drive. So if we undo diff lock, is it happy now? We'll turn on diff lock again. So I guess it's waiting for the switch to be ungrounded. Let's unground the switch. 
You can even do it at the control box. Okay, it's ungrounded. We'll go back to diff lock. There you go. And it's waiting for this switch. See, it's blinking, blinking, blinking. Let's ground it out. It should stop blinking. Yes. And now, if we go back into two-wheel drive. Ha-ha. And it's waiting for the switch to be ungrounded. We'll just pull that out. You heard that shift? We're free. We're in two-wheel drive. We're done. This switch is bad. This four-wheel drive detection switch. Where is it on the... Not that one. This one. Red and black. So it's not closing. When it's closing, it's not pulling this wire down. It's a bad switch. So we have to take that off. The transfer case, see if we can bring it back to life or replace it. Well that's it, the module is fine. So I was incorrect on the initial diagnosis. Obviously we can just keep this one in stock on the shelf. Um, customer will just pay for diagnostic time and uh, this four wheel drive switch if he needs one. So that's it, that's the end of the diagnosis. That was not straightforward because this is an older system, manual checks and the service info was not, didn't have any of this information. We just have to do manual checks, use logic and experience to make this chart. Once we made the chart, this is the obvious problem. The switch did not change state. It changed just a little bit, but not enough to make the module happy. There should be a hard ground, and it wasn't. Fantastic. So we'll see what we come up with uh, for the final solution. Okay, so here's the foil drive switch. I extracted it out of the transfer case. I got hooked up to a test light. So, battery power, test light, to the switch, and then to ground. And see how far we have to depress it to make it light up. On, off. So, we have to depress it this far to make it come on. And then we have to let it go all the way out to make it go off. So that might be too far of a travel. It's kind of uh, intermittent. Sometimes you have to go almost all the way in to make it come on. Sometimes you don't. And then it's on, 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 off. So yeah, the switch is either worn out or the rust got in there and messed it up. I don't think you can take it apart. So we have to get a new switch. Unless we can put a toggle switch in here so when you put it into four wheel drive, this has to be grounded. Okay. So we need a new one of these, see if we can find one.